Today is going to be Unit 4, Day 8. So reminders before we get started, have out your history notebook and you're taking notes as you move through the video. And make sure you pick up the vocabulary for this video. Either highlight them in your notes or write them somewhere else. So thank you guys. Let's go ahead and get started. So our terms for today are going to be Nazism, Hitler, Lebensraum, the Spanish Civil War, Munich Conference, the Nazi-Soviet Non-Aggression Pact, Crystal Nacht, Rent, the Oshlas, and the Rape of Nanking. So our concepts are going to be fascism, foreign policy in the 1930s and 20s, Nazis in power, and the causes of World War II. So let's talk about Nazism. Now, Nazism is more is, is a more extreme German variant of fascism. Um, this is going to be more focused on genetics, genetic purity, race. Um, they're going to attack parliamentary democracy as corrupt and weak. Um, they're going to support uh, more business leaders as they attacked unions and socialists. So they're going to be a little more on the conservative end um, or a little, a lot more on the conservative end. So then we got Adolf Hitler. He's going to call for the state to guide society. He's going to promise to end the humiliation of the Treaty of Versailles. Um, he's really going to kind of scapegoat. Uh, a lot of Germany's problems and a lot of Germany's poor leadership and mismanagement on the West and the Jews, primarily on the Jews, because there's this idea of the stabbed in the back myth where it was the uh, the, the so-called greedy Jews who weren't as affected by the Great Depression, who weren't as affected by the uh, like the failure of the state. And, like, it was the Jews who had, like, tried to, who have caused Germany to become weak. Uh, people who are suffering in the Great Depression begin to believe that. Um, and due to this, right, he begins to start to rally against the Jews and starts to begin to kind of push for them to be kind of rounded up. Not killed yet. They're not going to be killed yet till World War II. Um, but... Hitler also believed in what is known as Leibenstrom, or living space, where he believed that uh, the German people needed space to spread out, to live, to support, and any places that had even a German minority should be part of Germany. Now, Nazis will come to power. Uh, now, Hitler was very charismatic, and he uh, kind of became and was named kind of Chancellor of Germany for Hindenburg because there's two group, there's two leaders of Germany. You have the Chancellor and you have the Führer. Um, so Hindenburg, who was the head of Germany, named Hitler Chancellor. Now, uh, Hitler will gain power and gain support. Um, and after Hindenburg died, he will combine the two roles to become Führer uh, and the only leader. So he is building a totalitarian state. He will eliminate any oppositions through terror, secret police, and he's going to start rounding Jews up and putting them in concentration camps. Again, Jews are made as a scapegoat for all modern problems. Now, eventually people were we're kind of on the fence and like, eh, maybe, right? And then we have the Crystal Nacht. Uh, this is the Night of Broken Glass. And what this is, is this is when the uh, German SA or the SS, uh, Hitler's kind of paramilitary group, uh, goes around and breaks all the breaks a bunch of businesses, burns down uh, Jewish-owned stores, he burns down Jewish factories, breaks the glass, um, and, and just kind of destroys homes and buildings and businesses, uh, warehouses, anything owned by Jew Jewish people. Um, and, and he forces the Jews to pay the insurance company. So the insurance company paying the Jews because it was their fault that uh, all their stuff got broken because they were Jewish. So what does this lead to? This leads to a mess. Um, Hitler will prepare for war. He's going to look to build a new German Empire, a new um, kind of Germany, right? This kind of Third Reich. Yeah, he's going to withdraw Germany from the League of Nations after they're like, hey, 
Germany, you're not doing stuff. So he's like, I'm done. I'm out. He leaves the League of Nations. He breaks the Treaty of Versailles by suspending reparations. And he begins to rearm his military. He begins to really kind of new tanks, guns, planes, everything. He's going to remilitarize the Rhineland. Now, the Rhineland is this area bordering here in red, bordering France and Germany. Um, and it was supposed to be demilitarized. Well, he rearms that area. J France is like, hey, no. and But they don't want war, so they kind of leave it alone. Um, Germany will also declare a union with Austria in 1938, which is called the Ostklus, right? Which is the joining of Austria and Germany. Um, now, he will threaten to invade Czechoslovakia in what is known as the Sudanland, which is this kind of light green place in Czechoslovakia, which is the best land in Czechoslovakia because it's a lot of farmland. It had a sizable German minority, but definitely not a majority. Um, well, he's like, I'm going to invade. And Czechoslovakia is like, no, you're not. And he's like, yeah, I am. And so France and Britain are like, okay, guys, we need to calm down. We're going to meet in Munich, known as the Munich Conference. And uh, France and Britain are like, yeah, you can have that area. And Czechoslovakia is left holding the bag, left on ice. Unable to do anything. This is known as appeasement. Appeasement is when you like give in to somebody. I think of a bully who takes your uh, lunch money. If you give them lunch money, they're never going to stop trying to take your lunch money. Same thing happens with Hitler. The allies are like, yeah, Hitler, have this little bit of land. Just promise, pinky promise, that you're not going to like take over anywhere else. And Hitler's like, yes, I'm not going to ask for any more land at all. And then the Allies are like, woo, yeah! Hitler's not going to take over Ger uh, Europe, yay! Uh, it doesn't work. And in 1939, Hitler kind of comes in and takes over Czechoslovakia. Then he's going to team up with the USSR and Russia. They're going to team up, right? They're going to take over Poland. They're going to split Poland right in half. Well, they can't just do that. That would be wrong. So what, is, what does Hitler do? He gets a bunch of Jewish people... Jewish men in his concentration camps and he dresses them up like Polish soldiers and then uh, they blow up a building like a base on the border and he's going to blame Poland and they're like alright bet we're going to attack Poland and he's going to team up with Russia and Russia's going to like bet I want Poland too and they're like they sign a non-aggression pact where they're like they're, we're not going to fight each other right as long as we take over Poland and they're like bet and so they take over Poland um, and then in 1939 Hitler's going to take over Poland Britain and France are going to declare war. Then we got World War II. Now, before World War II really kicks off, right? Ethiopia, let's talk about Italy invading Ethiopia. Um, Ethiopia has been undefeated and will kind of remain undefeated even after this. But Italy will invade Ethiopia. Uh, and it's going to go kind of bad for Ethiopia, but eventually they will kind of beat them back. Ethiopia this time is literally armed with kind of kind of older technology like muskets and maybe some rifles and maybe some artillery, but that's pretty much it. But what do the Western allies do? Well, they're in the throes of the Great Depression. They do nothing. Italy's going to leave the League of Nations if they get tried, so that doesn't work, right? So Ethiopia is kind of left out in the rain. Um, the Spanish Civil War happens. Uh, the Civil War is going to last from 36 to 39. It's going to see world involvement. The problem is the UK and France are like, it's it's the Great Depression. We're not going to help. We can't do anything. The USSR is going to be like, hey, I hate fascism. So we're going to send volunteers to help the Republicans or the the kind of the, the liberals. And the Germany and Italy is like, cool, we're going to help the fascists. Yeah. And uh, this allows Germany and Italy, more Germany, to test out weapons, tactics, uh, like on the Spanish, on the kind of, t all their tactics, all their fast movement, all their new tanks, guns, weapons, planes. And what happens is that the fascists win, they beat the Republicans, and now we have a fascist Spain. Also, fascism begins to pop up everywhere in France, Belgium, Eastern Europe. Man, fascism is a new trend. Um... It kind of goes some places in some of those places, but World War II is going to start and kind of stop all that. Um, now let's go to the other side of the world. Right. So in responses to the Great Depression, 
Japan's going to invade China. They're going to conquer Manchuria. 21 demands were not met, so Japan's like, cool, we're going to invade. Um, the world doesn't really react. Like, the, the League of Nations, which is weak and can't do anything, waggles its finger at Japan and says, you're not supposed to do that! And Japan's like, cool, and just leaves. Um, authoritarian, authoritarianism appears earlier in Japan than in the West. Nationalist group emerged, supporting Confucian and Shinto values. Um, then by 1932, they start to assassinate some, some prime ministers. The military does. 1936, most of the prime ministers are generals or militaristic leaning, right? They start to heavily spend in militarization. Um, and due to this, they really arm the military, start conquering and really pull out of the great depression rather quickly. So again, this is, um, that kind of militarization. Now, Keeping on Japan, 1931, Japan's going to invade Manchuria. They're going to leave the League of Nations in 33, and they're going to invade the rest of China in 37. Now, then we get to the Rape of Nanking. So the Rape of Nanking happens in 1937, and this is there's a city called Nanking, uh, and the Japanese invade it, and they do some deplorable acts. Um, they and they document all of it, and it's it's disgusting. Uh, they they have games to see how many women they can decapitate in one sword swing, or how many women they can decapitate in a um, uh, certain amount of time. Um, they rape thousands of women, in some estimates, hundred thousands of women, right in the city and surrounding areas. They truly they kill children. They they like rape pregnant women with bayonets and then stab the fetus. It's awful this is one of the reasons why china and japan today even have a big beef and this is going to be a real reason for kind of this tension even today um and they do some deplorable like genocidal things in nanking then they're going to join hitler in 37 moving back to um europe 1933, Hitler moves to ignore the terms of peace settlements. Um, so he's like, cool, you gave us what we want. Sure, whatever. Um, he's going to help the Spanish Civil War. Munich Conference, peace in our time. No, it doesn't work. Um, uh, the Russians and Germany, Russian and Germans are like, cool, let's team up. Everybody's like, whoa, what are you doing? And then Hitler, Germany's going to invade Poland. 1939, UK and France declare war. That doesn't mean anything. Uh, it will, but it's going to cause war, but it, they can't really do anything. They try. Um, then we have Rent, right? Rent is kind of like Maine or Mania from uh, World War One. So Rent, uh, Rise of Totalitarianism. E is Economic Depression. N is Nationalism. And T is the Treaty of Versailles. So again, Rent. So some technology, right? They're going to attack. This is Italy and um, Spain attacking uh, Ethiopia, right? And on the eve of World War II, this is the way Europe looks. And that's all I have for you today. Uh, next time, we're going to talk about the progression of the war and end of the war. But that's all I have for you today, guys. Thank you, guys, and I'll see you guys in class.